Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics back with another fun DIY. We showed you how to make a simple scrunchie recently. Well, we've also noticed the scrunchies that have a little bow feature are really popular and how fun that they can be two separate fabrics. So we will go ahead, assuming maybe you've never even seen the first scrunchie video, we'll show you how to make the scrunchie and then with the option of doing the bow, really fun and we'll be using some beautiful coordinating elastic. Granted, we know the elastic is embedded inside that. You don't get to see it, but you get to work with it and it just adds to the joy of the project. Free download, this is called Scrunchy Bow, two pages. The link will be in the description box if you're watching there on YouTube. Maybe you're already watching uh, from the Shabby Fabrics homepage. There's a link actually at the bottom of our homepage, free downloads, click that. You'll find DIY videos, quilting, and so much more. And hey, just subscribe to not only YouTube, but our newsletter. That way you're never gonna miss out on projects. So we'll start off with our scrunchie and then we'll move into the bow feature. So we'll start with a piece of fabric that's three by 16. And then we'll turn one edge of that, one end of that only, um, a half of an inch. So we have the wrong side up. We'll use our hot ruler to measure a half an inch and we'll give a nice press there. Once we've done that, we will be right side together. We just move our elastic. I'm, I chose, of course, the bright red from our bright side. We have a bright set, pastel and neutrals. We brought those in when we were making face masks because you couldn't find elastic to make that. And now we're just finding more projects and things to do with them different than face masks. And then we're having really a lot of fun discovering all the things we can do. We'll fold our fabric with the right side together all the way down and we'll sew a quarter of an inch. Now, if you're worried about that fabric shifting on you at all, just put a few of the patchwork pins in there and we'll sew that quarter of an inch just from end to end. Be sure you don't close those openings. We need those to be open for a step that's to come. Now I've sewn that in advance, so let me put that aside and I'll just bring that out so that we can move on to the next step. So that's folded down the half, sewn the quarter. Now we need to go ahead and turn that through and we have a great tool called the Turn It All. I've tried to turn these types of things using shish kebab skewers, uh, clothes pins, I mean, you name it, I've tried it. Well, that's why somebody invented the Turn It All. These are great for turning tubes of any size, especially if you're doing things like dolls and you need a really narrow channel. Today I'll be using the white barrel along with its associated kind of plunger, I would call it. Let me put these others aside for now. I love the fact that these tools help me get to my next step uh, quickly and I'm not having to struggle with things. So you'll just go ahead and fit this through the fabric and I'm gonna leave that little bit right there. Now we're just gonna hang on to that. And this is where the plunger here, it's kind of a wooden piece of, this is a piece of wood. We'll just push that through just like that. It's turned. I love that in just literally seconds, I can move on to my next step. I'm gonna use my clover point turner to just smooth everything out so that it's ready to go and be pressed. So I'll just bring that seam to the bottom, smooth that out. You know, when I was an early quilter, I had very few notions. And I just found, you know, I got the job done. Um, it wasn't necessarily very um, convenient or fast because I was kind of improvising everything. And I love that these help me move through my project quickly because there's so many things I want to do and I'd like to move through some of these uh, quickly so I can get more projects done. I think we're all like that. We have so much that we want to do. Once that's pressed through, now we'll move on to our elastic. Again, I was like, okay, how do I get this elastic inside? Now, by the way, we've cut this length to six and a half inches. What we will be doing is feeding this through the barrel, this tube here, and then ultimately, 
bringing these ends together and zigzagging on top of that. If you want to go ahead in that very end and just tie that into a knot, you're going to want to cut your elastic much longer, eight, maybe even nine inches. So that's just something I wanted to mention to you if that's an approach that you prefer of the way to secure that elastic by cut, uh, turning, turning that and tying a knot and then trimming the ends. But I'll show you the way that we did that and that was by zigzagging this together. So of course we need to feed that through. The traditional way I've done it before is with a safety pin, but we have a really cool tool called the purple thing that I actually use when I'm doing piecing. And it's time to kind of to hold certain points of fabric down as the presser foot approaches so that I can keep my fingers away and safe. Well, the purple thing happens to have a notch in it that we're going to take advantage of and it's going to be a really good friend for us today. So I have that really secured in the notch and I'll begin to feed the elastic through. As you can imagine, we need to secure that end right there so I'm gonna open up my Wonder Clips and I will secure that in so it doesn't pop through. Now I'll just keep feeding that all the way. There we are. So how, as I mentioned, how you do this, I'm gonna pull my fabric back, is we bring those ends together, stacked on top of each other, we do a nice narrow zigzag multiple times, so we're securing that. When I did that to the, with the sewing machine, I found that these wanted to shift away from each other. For that reason, I was looking for what can be, what can help me out with that. The bone double-sided adhesive is by far the stickiest double-sided tape I have ever used. What I did is just cut a small piece of that. In fact, you don't even have to cut it just yet. Let's just clip one end, or let's just secure one end. I want you to see how I did that. I just put a piece on the end like that, trim this away, gave a good squeeze here. But you squeeze that and you peel this paper back. Do you see that shiny there? That's the tape. Now we bring the other end and we just squeeze them together. Just like that, that is already phenomenally secured. I mean, I'm literally trying to pull it apart and I can't. Why this is so desirable is now when we go to the sewing machine and we do our stitch on top of that, this is not going to shift and you're gonna correct, you'll get a really good contact with these. And our hair, our uh, scrunchie's not gonna come apart in time as we're using it because you don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead over to the sewing machine and let's do that zigzag. So I'm at my sewing machine and I'm gonna use something called the starter strip. I wanna get my machine just started and then I'll bring the project in and we will zigzag right over top of that. You can imagine if I was trying to hold that, my fingers are very close to those needles. So this is also for safety that we are using a temporary uh, way to hold those together. Nice. That is not coming apart on us. So, you know, while we have the close-up photography, let's just show you what that next step is. In fact, we'll just do it together up close. This is the side that has the fold. This is the side with the raw edge. What we'll do now is we'll just feed the raw edge side into the one that has the tuck, the fold, just like that. And we've switched our machine out to a straight stitch. Okay, so now you have the option. You could just stop here and you have a scrunchie. Or if you're like, no, nope, the little little bow or, you know, even at Easter looks like little bunny ears. <laughs> so especially in this particular fabric, look like little bunny ears to us, super cute. How do we do that? 
that's going to be the second part of your pattern. You can cut this out if you'd like, or if you know you're going to be making plenty of scrunchies, maybe you have a fun little craft fair coming up, you want to be able to sell these, how fun is that? You can use freezer paper. I love this freezer paper. You basically, I can see through that, you would just trace on that, cut that out. I have um, the one that I cut out out of my paper, it's like here. If you're going to use that, you would simply place that on top of your fabric, pin that in position and cut around that. Or if you're going to be using the freezer paper one, what's nice about the freezer paper, first off, it's very sturdy, very sturdy, and it has a temporary adhesive to it. Now, I cut these out with the freezer paper, but I want to show you what I'm talking about here. When we iron this down, what's nice about it is I actually don't have to, to pin anything down because it's temporarily adhered to it. So I had doubled my fabric with right sides together. You can imagine a piece of fabric here. I ironed that down and I just pinned, and then I went ahead and just cut around that. You could use that with scissors or rotary cutter, but I, I love that at least it's this is adhered. I don't have to have pins in the middle of my template. So if you're gonna be making just one or two, you don't need the freezer paper, but if you're gonna be making a lot of those, hey, grab the freezer paper. Either way, you want two of those right side together and notice that we're going to leave the opening in here, which is where we're going to have our tie, and that's going to help us hide our opening. So let's just place those right side together. We'll use some patchwork pins. We'll go to the sewing machine, and we'll reinforce in the beginning and reinforce in the end. I'll just be sewing a quarter inch seam allowance. If you're inclined that you feel like you want to mark that spot, by all means, use a friction pen so we know where we're going to start and end. And let's go do that. So now we will turn that through, but I think what I'm going to do, because we want that nice point, I'm going to feather that out just a touch, trimming off maybe just a little bit of my seam allowance out there. Maybe not totally necessary, but I want those points really nice. Okay, let me clean that up real quick. Now we'll need to turn that through, and I'll be using my point turner again for that process. There are those times where my point turner is a nice to have, and there's time when those are like have to have. <laughs> this is one of those have to have. I've, I've again, used the shish kebab skewers and uh, literally even poked through part of my project before. So this is great to have a tool meant for that. And I love that it has the point as well as the curve. So whether you're turning through something that has a, a tight curve or a point, this is a great tool for that. Make sure my iron is all heated up or pressed through or pushed out, I should say. Now we'll just press that. Let me get that it's a little bit smoother here. That raw edge, we will just finesse that in by our quarter of an inch. You know, one thing that I think when I envision these kind of hair scrunchies with the bows is, you know, if you're going to make a little girl's dress, there's probably enough fabric left over to be able to make that coordinating hair accessory. And I think what a total look that would be so cute. Um, so that's certainly something if you sew clothes. Let's do this end. Again, that quarter of an inch. Just press that one more time. We'll close that opening. 
with about an eighth of an inch stitch. Just trying to close the opening. That's all we're trying to do here. Okay, so now we're going to tie this on. Now where we joined the two ends of the scrunchie, you've got that seam. So we will hide that seam with our bow. So that is a perfect spot. And just like that, we'll just adjust that. That is adorable. That is adorable. How cute is that? And literally in just a couple minutes, you have a cute scrunchie with a bow. Thanks for letting me show you this fun DIY. I'll see you soon on another shabby video.